In this video, we're going to look at a really common problem, 60 hertz pickup from the power lines that always surround us. I'm going to first start out, I'm going to show you what that signature of 60 hertz looks like, and then we're going to think about what's the root cause? Why do we see that in the scope? And once we understand that, it'll be obvious some of the solutions that we can use to reduce 60 hertz. Let's start out just taking a look at the signature and then we'll return to understand the root cause. Here we are in the lab and we've got the channel 1 leads coming out uh, and they're just connected to the header pins here, isolated from each other. And I just put them in the header pins so that they're fixed position and they're not moving around. We're going to look at the voltage signal we measure. Now here's the input to the um, 82 scope. Here's the the plus one of the channel and the minus one of the channel. There's nothing connected. We shouldn't see any voltage, right? There should be zero volts. That's what we expect to see. Let's take a look at the measurement on the scope. So here I've just turned the scope on. We're not going to look at channel two. I'm going to just turn channel two off. And of course it comes up and it's not triggered, so we need to run. And here's, here's zero volts. And sure enough, hey, zero volts exactly like we expected to see. Let's zoom in on the signal. So we're going to expand out. Let's see, here is uh, 20 millivolts of division. Uh, of course, there's no signal coming in, uh, and so you know we're going to auto-trigger. You can see there's a little bit of fluctuation. I'm going to slow it down. Instead of 1 millisecond, I'm going to go to 10 milliseconds of division. And at 10 milliseconds of division, now you can begin to see there's a little structure going on there. Now, OK, I'm at 20 millivolts of division, vertical scale. We'll go to 10 millivolts per division vertical scale and now you begin to see some of the noise that's here. I'm gonna because we're focusing on 60 Hertz I'm gonna turn off the high frequency noise we're gonna look at that next and here's the signature of that signal coming in and you can see that yeah there's definitely periodicity let's see if we can trigger on it in this level and sure enough we're triggering now on this signature Watch what happens as I come in and I move my hand in close proximity. So now I'm I'm touching the um, the I'm touching the plus one volt, and look I'm dramatically increasing that noise. Yeah, it's changing structure a little bit, but look I get that periodicity, that same periodicity coming in. Well, what is the frequency of this? Well, let's see. If I zoom out just a little bit more, it might be easier to read the period off the front screen. So here's the beginning of the cycle. Here's one cycle two cycles. One cycle takes about 10 milliseconds, about 16 milliseconds, and darned if the period of 16 milliseconds, one over that, isn't 60 hertz. This is the signature of 60 hertz pickup from the ambient room around us. It, because we live in an environment in the U.S. at least that uses 60 hertz power line cycles, and we have power lines all over the place, we are constantly embedded in this fog of 60 hertz uh, electric field and that's what we're picking up. We are seeing the electric fields around us that induce in this wire a voltage that we see displayed over here. This is a pattern you should become intimately familiar with. When we're on 10 milliseconds of division, expect to see 60 hertz showing as a periodicity that's about one and a half divisions. If ever you're you're wondering, gee, do I see 60 hertz noise? Always go to a scale of 10 milliseconds per division. You would expect to see about one and a half divisions as a cycle for 60 hertz. And the larger the space between these, the more I touch the uh, the either of the two lines, the larger that voltage. I am acting as a large antenna to pick up some of that 60 hertz noise and transmit it to the wire. I'm not making a direct connection to the wire, I'm touching the outside insulation and you can see dramatic impact on that AC pickup. Depending on the shape of the wires, the length of the wires, what they're near, we're going to have larger or smaller amount of 60 hertz pickup, but it will always be that frequency. If this really is coming from the 60 hertz environment around us from the power lines, then what would be a good consistency test to check for that? If we bring a power cable nearby that has 60 hertz power on it at roughly the 120 volt RMS voltage level, if we bring it nearby, we ought to see a large increase in the amount of voltage pickup. So I've got a 
a power cable here, an extension cord. Right now it's not plugged in. If I just move the cable in close proximity, you can see hardly any impact. Tiny bit, because after all, the wire is a large antenna, and we're influencing the amount of pickup in the vicinity of this wire, but not much impact. Now, I'm going to plug this end of the power cable into the socket. That means this cable now is going to have 120 volt RMS 60 hertz signal. It's generating, it's radiating a whole bunch of electric fields at 60 hertz. And let's see what happens as I bring it in close proximity. And we see, oh my gosh, we have a lot more uh, voltage pickup. And what this says is one of the first ways of reducing 60 hertz pickup is keep your circuit away from nearby power cords. If you really want to reduce 60 hertz pickup, then don't have power cords nearby. That's the first step. To understand how else we can reduce 60 hertz pickup, it's useful to go back to a simple illustration so we can see the root cause of why the scope is sensitive to 60 hertz pickup. The first thing to keep in mind is whenever you talk about radiation or electromagnetic fields that are fluctuating, you always want to evaluate what's the wavelength compared to the physical structures that I'm dealing with. Well, the wavelength is just the speed of light in air divided by the frequency. Here it is in air. The frequency is 60 hertz. You do that algebra, and that's 5,000 kilometers. That means the wavelength of 60 hertz radiation, 5,000 kilometers guaranteed any measurement we're going to do on our bench top is much, 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 much smaller than the wavelength. And that means we can approximate the behavior of those electric fields in terms of simple capacitive coupling. We're approximating the electric field coupling in terms of lumped capacitor elements. And so the equivalent circuit to think about how come the scope measures 60 hertz pickup is really simple. Here it is. We've got the power line source. This is generating the electric field, the voltage fluctuations based on the power line nearby. We've got the scope over here. Here's the actual ideal scope. There's one meg input impedance, and there is a little bit of capacitance at the input of the scope. Oh, maybe on the order of about 30 picofarads of capacitance. And then we have the wires coming out of the scope. These are the orange wires for channel one. How do we get the 60 hertz voltage source over here, how do we get some of its energy across the resistor and the capacitor here in the scope for us to measure it? Well, there's a little bit of stray capacitance between the literally the wires that go into channel one and that source. And it's, and it's this capacitance which is the path for the pickup. And so it's really a question of, well, how large is that coupling capacitance? Because as you can imagine, the larger that coupling capacitance, these elements are going to stay the same. The larger the coupling capacitance, then the larger the voltage I'm going to see across these elements. Anything I do to increase the capacitance, that is when I touch the wire, for example, I increase the capacitive coupling between that source and the wires of the of the scope because of the presence of my body is a large surface area. I'm going to couple more of that electric field into the input. Bringing any other large object in close proximity is going to uh, increase the coupling as well. So understanding this root cause suggests how we can reduce the AC pickup. First is, as we saw before, keep power lines far away. Move this source farther away from the wires and that will reduce the amount of coupling capacitance. Don't bring any other objects nearby that will increase the capacitance of the wires to those power lines. And here's one last important effect. If you look at this circuit that we've got here, we've got our AC source over here, we have coupling capacitance from the fringe electric fields from that wire to that orange wire of our input to channel 1. We have a capacitor over here and we have a 1 meg resistor at the input. We're looking at the voltage across that 1 meg resistor. In a way, what we've built here is a high pass filter. We are capacitively coupling the voltage over here at the source through the capacitor and then across the resistor. The pole frequency for this high pass filter determines how much energy gets through. The higher the frequency compared to the pole frequency, then the more energy is going to get through. The lower the frequency compared to that high, high pass filter cutoff, the lower the frequency, the less the energy gets through. If this frequency is fixed and the voltage coming out of the source, this capacitive coupling is fixed as well,
and I want to reduce the voltage I measure over here, what do I want to do to that pole frequency? If this frequency is fixed at 60 hertz and it's low compared to the pole frequency, and this coupling capacitance, how much fringe electric field gets coupled into my orange wires, if this is fixed as well, and I want to reduce the voltage I see across the 1 meg resistor, what do I want to do to that pole frequency? If this is already at a low frequency compared to that cutoff high, fre high pass frequency, so we're just getting a little fraction of it coming through, the higher the frequency I can push, the pole frequency, the high pass response of this capacitance and this resistor, the higher I can push that high pass frequency, the less 60 hertz is going to get through. When I have one meg and I have the couple of puff of coupling capacitance here, you can see that's going to give me some high pass frequency. It's pretty high. But this is so large, even, even as large as it is and as low a frequency it is, we get the energy coupling through. If I can push the pole frequency at a higher frequency, I'll get less 60 hertz noise. And how do I do that? I want to make the RC, I want to make that RC smaller, that'll make the omega larger, and that'll push the pole frequency to a higher frequency. That means I want to add a little shunt resistance here to reduce the resistance between the inputs of the scope. And if I can add a low resistance to cut that down, I'll push that high pass pole frequency to a higher frequency, and I'll get less AC coupling. And that is one of the important secrets to reduce 60 hertz noise. We refer to that as use a low impedance circuit. We want to reduce the resistance between the inputs of the scope. And, and let's take a look and illustrate that in a measurement. We're back in the lab. Here is my, here's the connection between the, the 1 plus and the 1 minus inputs for channel 1. We see a little bit of 60 hertz noise appearing at the input. It's not a lot in this case. If I come close and I, act, I increase the capacitive coupling between the outside world and the wire, you can see I increase the amount of AC noise. And now, so that says, hey, keep AC sources far away. That's OK. But here's the other trick we're going to do. Remember, it's all about that pole frequency of the capacitive coupling of all the fringe fields in coming in from here to the wire. That's the capacitance going in. And then there's the internal uh, 1 meg resistor across the input to the scope. If I can reduce that resistance, I can push the pole frequency higher, and I'll have a smaller fraction of the AC noise coming in. Let's do that. I have a 10K resistor here. I'm going to add that 10K resistor across the input to the scope. And, oh my gosh, that noise was eliminated. I pushed the pole frequency to much higher frequency because I have a low impedance, relatively low, 10K at this point. I've pushed that pole frequency to a really low frequency, uh, and I have hardly any 60 hertz pickup. And now, if I bring my power line in close proximity, so it's really close, boy, you know what? I just cannot get any 60 hertz pickup. This is an important principle that says if we want to eliminate sensitivity to 60 hertz pickup, we want to measure a low impedance source because that pushes that pole frequency to much higher frequency. We're less sensitive to 60 hertz pickup. On the other hand, it also says, oh my gosh, if we want to measure a high impedance source, 1 meg or higher, even 100K and higher, if we want to measure a high impedance source, be on the lookout. You may have the potential of 60 hertz noise. It also says if you have an occasion where you have the high impedance input for the scope and you expect to see some signal coming from a source and instead you see the 60 hertz pickup, that's a hint to you that says, hey, maybe my input is not connected to the device under test. Because to see the 60 hertz means I have high impedance at the end of the wires going into the scope. And if I see 60 hertz, I have high impedance, I'm not connected to that low impedance source. That's a really important hint when we're debugging circuits. So these are the two important things that we can do to reduce 60 hertz pickup. Number one is keep power lines far away from our circuit. And second is use a low impedance source to, to, to measure. If we have 
a high impedance source, and we have power lines nearby, the only other recourse we have is using shielding. And that's a topic for another video.